Hello YouTube, welcome to our channel, Guello John, I'm your host John. Today we're going to be doing um, some cape posing. I'm going to be taking the uh, dynamic stand on General Zod here and converting that so that you can you can actually pose the cape because as you can see he's got a cape and so the end part of that cape's terrible I know I'll probably do something with that as well just fray it up almost I'll make it look like it's properly frayed I mean that looks like it was cut by a five-year-old with some jagged scissors hot toys what are you thinking of but um, I'm going to be I'm going to be making it so you can um, convert your dynamic stand into a stand that also poses the cape because I think the cape needs to be posed so uh, we're going to be using General Zod because I recently picked him up. I think he's an awesome figure. I, to be fair, didn't like the film at all. In my opinion, it was terrible. Uh, but this, but this particular figure, I love it. I mean, I love it because it, it looks like an engineer from the uh, Alien movie. The, the head sculpt on this thing, the whole armor. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful figure. They did, a, they did a really good job with it. It's impressive, even though it's from a uh, what I deem to be a terrible movie. But the cape also it isn't great. But uh, once you pose it. Uh, it will look good. I mean, I, I think a cape or any any form of clothing on a one six scale figure or any figure um, gives it movement. Even though it's stationary, it, it makes it appear to be moving. It gives it uh, direction. So uh, what I'm going to be using for this is old electrical cable, 1.5 old electrical cable, the white cable. If you can get hold of any of that, if you cut it open, inside of that you're going to find the red and the black. Um, covered cable, covered copper cable that you're going to require. Um, most of the figures, well, mostly DC figures to be fair, have capes, but most of them are either red, Superman, or black, um, whichever other figures like Batman, etc., etc., and so forth. So I'm going to be doing posing on this. I'm also going to be making a standalone cape posing stand for you know stationary figures. If you want your Batman figure to be standing on his own. With the cape flowing in the wind, I'm making a, a, a standalone ca um, cape posing stand purely for that. Right, so I'm going to take him apart and come back. Okay, uh, for the uh, if you're doing it with the dynamic stand, I only like to do three. So three um, three of these wire lengths for a dynamic stand that you've already got. What you do, straighten it out, nice and straight, and you measure it along the cape that you've got. And you've got to be longer than the actual cape itself, just slightly longer, so yeah, an inch or so longer than the actual cape. So if you measure it down, where the figure is there, measured down, you can see it comes to about there. So get your cutters, side cutters, cut that off. There you go. And then two more of those. I'm actually running out of the black. More black capes than, uh, than red. I think I've only got the one red cape, and that's Superman. I will, uh, I'll show you that one as well at some point. Maybe just in the photographs afterwards. As I have him posed up against Spider Man from the 1970s comic cover. Okay, so you've got your three lengths. And what you need to do is with your dynamic stand, you get a little screw at the top here. So you just undo that. There you go. And then we're stripping off a small amount of this. Say about so much, maybe an um, inch, a little bit longer, maybe. Well, no, about an inch. So you strip that off and repeat that with the rest of them. Okay, with that done, should have all three of them there. Make it probably about an inch and a half, more than an inch, because it's got to actually wrap around the, uh, the top there. So then what you're doing, screw it back up that way. So. If you bend it the way it screws down, so you're bending it out about the middle there. So you get a nice little hook that fits onto the top here. So you make a little hoop, hook it on. You do that with all three of these, so all three will be hooked on. So you put your little hoops in the end and you hook all three of them over the top of the, the screw point on the top of the dynamic stand. And you get your little uh, screw down, put that back on. Obviously it's not gonna go on as well as it did before. It's not all the way down, but it will bite. There you go, so that's screwed down nice and tight. And you can see you've got all three of these hanging here. 
and then it's they're not going to remain nice and neat like this you're going to you're going to fold them all up and bend them all up so you've got places that cape can actually sit on all the way around and hook into so it holds it in place so what i'm going to do is um let me see now so i'll put it back on let's put it back on if you dangle the cape over and hook him back in place And you can see that they're much, much longer than the actual cape itself because you're going to be folding all of these up. But you can immediately see where it's going to be actually holding up. So you fold the cape back over his head. And these would need to lift up now because you can see there's a, the part at the bottom. So you're going to lift them up, bend them back down again. Turn them to the side, that might be better. Up, down. And then just various bends and stuff in in the cape to make it however you wish it to look whatever part of wind you you want it to look into there are sharp parts at the end actually i should have got to that first let's take him back off of there put it back down you've got little sharp parts on the end which will capture cape so what i suggest you do get some of these electrical heat shrinks that fit perfectly over the end. I think they're a bit small. Take that from something else. Take that one out. There you go. Now they pop over the end of those. So what you do is you cut those down and just heat them, which is what I'll do now. So if I cut these down, one, two, three. three and you pop these over the end so you don't get the uh, metal there and then with a creme brulee um, topper which is basically just a, a flame take it to the end there and just quickly shrink that don't overdo it as you can see now it's there's no there's no sharp ends now now it's just a it's just a piece of rubber on the end there now so you're just not going to catch on your cape and it won't destroy it so i'm going to come back to you in a second all right as you can see i've taken the liberty of of taking a, of doing a few poses on it off camera because it is it's actually quite difficult to pose and also on this figure i discovered that the cape is so much heavier than superman's cape so i've had to add an extra an extra run of the uh the black copper covered cable so you've got four on there now four on the back to give you the kind of poses that you require and you do have to bend them all over the place i'll take the cable off in a second to just show you but if i just show you what you can achieve i mean this is this is just a quick one but it, it just gives it more of a dynamic feel more like it's he's actually floating he's actually uh, flying in the air there it's not the greatest of capes to pose to be fair on this one the material is not great and the ends of it just look awful. They, it needs to be frayed, it needs to be dirted down a bit, as if it has been dragged across the floor. But it is an awesome figure. I do like it. And with the cape posing, you can, I mean, you can pose it however you want. I've just, I've just, this is a quick one I've done. I will do a few pictures of other poses that I'll do for it. You gotta try and hide as much of the, uh, as much as the wires as you can. Um, if I was to show you underneath, you would be able to see all of the uh, all the cables are under there quite visible but when you move them around yeah you know, so if, you, if you're looking all around of him you can't actually see that and it does give the appearance that he is in flight Take it from the front the cape is actually posed so if we now remove the uh, cape from the back I don't have a turntable I'm having to use my mat bless me um, so if we remove that off there now you can see that it is just a whole bunch of wires there underneath all bent up to give the, the various different poses you can have it high you can have it lower you can have it drifting a little bit however you want all you have to do and it takes a while is you cover it over and then you've just got to basically pose the cape however you want try and get as many um, folds and wrinkles in it as you can the more folds and wrinkles you get the more realistic it's going to look but it does it takes quite some time to do that you get you got to hide all of the wires as well once you've done it but just you know slowly work on it get it however you want it to look lift it 
drop it. You've got plenty of material to play with on most capes to get the exact kind of look that you're looking for. And just get, get it to look as, as, as much like it's blowing in the wind as possible. It takes quite some time. A lot of patience, guys, a lot of patience. But if you love your figures, you're gonna do it. You'll, you'll give it the patience, you'll give it the time it requires, because once you've got a pose you, in the case, it's that's done. It will stay like that for as long as you want it to. It's not gonna fall apart. And that's just another simple one, another quick, quick, simple one. Obviously, you can see there, you have to cover these up. And once you cover it up, it usually knocks it off from somewhere else. That was quite lucky there. But the, the more folds and, um, and wrinkles that you get into the cape, the more it looks like it's in flight, the more it looks like the wind is blowing it. And that's what, you, that's what you want from your figure. You want it to look like the wind is actually blowing on it. Okay, so that's it for Zod. Um, so remember, it's, it's four on this one. If you're going to do this particular one, it's four. And um, all you've got to do is take off this cap. Hooks, make hooks on the ends of your wires, hook them on there, screw them down. Don't forget to put the little um, heat shrinks on the ends because it will catch on your cape otherwise. And if you catch on your cape, it's a possibility you're going to tear it. And these are not cheap figures. This one was, to be fair, I got this one quite reasonable. But um, normally Hot Toys figures, you know, you're up in the, in the £200 mark, which is a lot of money for a, for a 1-6 scale figure, but they do do some spectacular works. <coughs> Okay, so I'm going to leave that for now. I'll come back and show you the um, the standalone cape posing stand. So it's, it's not for flight, it's just if your figure's standing on his own and you want him to, uh, to have the cape flowing in the wind. Hello YouTube, welcome back to Guello John. As you can hear, I'm not your usual host John. My name is Ryan and I'm the editor of these videos. I've decided to have a go at this myself because John likes to waffle on and as the editor it takes me hours to cut it all out. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So today I'll be showing you how to make a standalone cape posing stand for any figures you have that you want to have that realistic blowing in the wind effect. These are relatively easy and cheap to make and it's also very quick. To start, what you will need is a figure stand, a kitchen blowtorch, some copper wires with black plastic coating and some wire strippers. So this particular stand is only £7 from eBay and on the box you can see it says for a 1 6th or 1 12th figure but when you open it you can see it's not particularly ideal for a 1 6th scale figure. In the box you get the base, the stand itself and four grips and also some plastic bits for interlocking other bases and some plugs to disguise these holes. From this, the grip we will be using is the one with the metal grips here. And the first thing you want to do is remove them. Once you've removed the metal grippers, you are left with this holder, which looks like this. And then if you want to get your copper wires, and you'll want to cut four pieces, which are about a foot long, 12 inches. If you cut them too long, you can always cut them down later on. After that you'll get one of your wires and you want to measure about an inch or an inch and a half of the end and that's where you will strip off the plastic coating. So then you're left with this and with the end you will fold this in half that and you can push it close together which will make it easier for the next step. Once you've done that to all four wires, then you're ready for the next part, which is to take one of them and heat it up with the blowtorch until this end part glows, and then push it through the hole just until it reaches the other side and hold it till it cools down. But when you're heating up the wire, you want to hold it further down and make sure the room is ventilated at least. So to demonstrate, Take the wire and your glow torch, hold it away from you, and heat it until it glows, and then push it through to 
put it in and hold it. Then after that you repeat with the rest of the wires. Once that's all done you should be left with something that looks like this. And to cover this so it doesn't catch on any cloaks or capes, you want to get some shrink tubing which looks like this and you want one that is only slightly wider than the actual wire and you'll put it onto there and then heat it just for a few seconds until it shrinks onto the metal to demonstrate you want to cut one in half so you don't lose this much Onto there, all the way down, like so. Onto both parts of one, just there, and then heat it up. And then you do the same for the rest of the wires. Now that you have shrink tubing on both ends of each wire, you are pretty much done. You just take your stand and you position the holder onto it and then you can move your wires however you'd like uh, to make your cape or your figure look more realistic. So something like this would be ideal. So that is how you make a standalone cape prison stand. Photos with a figure on this or to show what it would look like will be at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.